skies howling tempest of succeed a bright sunshine in that land of perfect day when the mist have rolled away we will understand it better by and by by and by when the morning comes Morning, saints. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's good to be in the house of the Lord. <laughs> On this morning, as we prepare our hearts and mind to worship God, let us listen to the Word of God to center ourselves, to let go and let God. I'm not sure what you were facing when you tuned in. I'm not sure what you were facing when you arrived here to worship God in person. But what I do know is that God is faithful. Amen? God is faithful. As we prepare our hearts and minds to continue in this worship, our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 100. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and delight. Come before his presence with joyful singing. Know and fully recognize with gratitude that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with a song of thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, bless and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. His faithfulness endures to all generations. Amen? Amen. Let's continue worship God today. Good morning, First Baptist East Point family and friends. We welcome you. Amen. We welcome our guests in attendance here. 
those that view from afar and those that view from near. We bid you into the house of the Lord to exalt him and make a joyful noise. You may sing, shout, clap, and dance today, but most of all, allow God to have his way. We hope to please you with all that we do. In the name of Jesus, we welcome you. Yes. Yes. Good morning, First Baptist. These are the announcements for today. Please mark your calendars and be prepared to participate in our upcoming quarterly virtual church conference. The church conference will take place on Saturday, October 31st from 10 a.m. until 11 a.m. Dial-in information and access codes will be provided for all members. All are invited to participate in Sunday morning Bible study. Bible study takes place each Sunday morning from 10 a.m. till 1045. All are invited to join in and deepen our relationship with the Lord and with each other. You can go to firstbaptistchurcheastpoint.org for additional information. All are also invited to participate in the Monday morning prayer line. We are given the opportunity to join together on Monday morning for corporate prayer and devotion beginning at 7 a.m. We look forward to speaking to you tomorrow morning. All are also invited to participate in the interactive virtual prayer and Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Let's love, learn, and grow in the Word together. The offertory and offertory prayer will be presented in just a couple of moments. And we want to remind each of you that we have four ways to give. You can text to give from any cell phone, text FBCEP to 73256 and follow the prompts. You can also bring your offerings here to the church or put the offerings in the mail, sending them to First Baptist Church East Point, 2813 East Point Street, East Point, Georgia, 30344. You can use the PayPal link on our website. Uh, simply go to firstbaptistchurcheastpoint.org and look for that prompt. And finally, you have the option of using the cash app. The cash tag is dollar sign FBCEPGA. On the 31st of October, our youth ministry has some very special activities planned. And Sister Chandra Thompson is going to come now and share some details. Good morning, church. Good morning, morning. It's that time of year again where we get to pretend to be someone else. And I'm talking about our youth and our annual fall festival. Um, it's going to be a little different this year. We're going to call it prayers and packages. But this year, we still want the kids to wear their costumes, uh, emulate their everyday heroes like Doc McStuffins, their favorite movie princess like Princess Tiana, or their favorite superhero characters like Black Panther. And that event will take place on October 31st from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. The kids will arrive here, we'll have a safe environment for them, we'll, we'll pray over them and hand out their treats and prepackaged packages. And to prepare for that, what we're asking for is a church, if you would like to donate uh, candy or tr treats for this event, that you please drop them off at the church by no later than October 29th. The treats will be sanitized and put into pre-packaged uh, treat bags for the, get, for the kids to receive on Saturday. Again, that event, we're calling it prayers and packages. 
Um, it will take place on October 31st from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. We want the kids to show up and as dressed up as their favorite characters and no scary costumes, please. Thank you. Good morning, First Baptist. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, for the past two Sundays, the medical ministry has been focusing on presenting uh, small tidbits of information during the worship service. We will continue that until the end of the month. On uh, the first Sunday, we learned that breast cancer is the leading cause of death among African-American women. One in eight women will uh, a cure will, will have breast cancer within a lifetime. We also learned that the theme is give hope, save lives. Um, last Sunday's emphasis was on signs and symptoms. We emphasized the, um, the need to really know your body um, and pay attention to the signs of redness and any pain or swelling. Today, I would like to spend a few minutes to talk about um, family history, the importance of knowing family history and if there's any relatives or even friends that you know um, that may have breast cancer, because that's the next step to have that information when you go to the physician or the doctor. Um, a doctor will talk about, ask you questions about your medical history. Is there anyone in your family who has had it? Uh, they will also ask about recent symptoms, uh, when you first noticed them. And they will also, depending on the comments that you give them, they will schedule um, specific diagnostic tests, uh, many of which are too um, numerous to mention here. I would like to refer you to the American Cancer Society's website, www.americancancer.org, for any additional information. The challenge that I would like to leave you this week is to learn more about breast cancer as it affects your family. Um, if you have friends who have breast cancer, reach out to them and um, see how they're doing. Give them um, a call. And also, uh, women of First Baptist, as well as young women, um, be sure to um, check to see whether you had your annual mammogram. If not, please take care of that. Remember to wear pink. I'm wearing pink, and pink is the sign of solidarity among um, the national um, population, and it reflects that we are all in this together to help prevent the fight against breast cancer. Thank you. Morning, Saints, again. You know, um, I want to first thank Deacon Hicks for sharing the four ways to give financially to the kingdom of God through First Baptist Church East Point. And if you didn't get the information earlier, you can find it on our website at firstbaptistchurcheastpoint.org firstbaptisteastpoint.org. So I encourage you to contribute financially. But I also, before I go into prayer for our offering, I also want to just raise another matter of stewardship. Another matter of stewardship. Stewardship is not just financial giving, but also how you serve. Amen? And so one of the things that pastor has asked me to share for the good of the family of faith is a reminder that we have a responsibility as kingdom people to make sure we participate in the larger community. Where am I going with this? Let me just say it this way. Our salvation is done personally, but our faith is lived out communally, corporately. And as people of faith, we need to make sure we are participating in the larger society. Early voting begins Monday. It begins tomorrow. 
And we need to make sure that God-fearing people of faith are participating in the voting process. Our word tells us that God chooses our leaders. And I would suggest to you that God uses God's people to help choose the leaders that ought to be leading, amen? And that we need to be prayerful and considerate of how we cast our ballot. Another act of participation and stewardship of your faith is to make sure that we as the people of God are also counted. So if you have not filled out your census, we are encouraging you to participate in the, in the census process to make sure the people of God are counted. Amen? Because as ramifications of what happens and how this country uh, invests in our people and in our communities. So we, not, we must be counted, we must participate in voting, and we must continue to invest in the kingdom of God financially. So now I ask that you will pray with me. Mighty and matchless God, we are grateful that you are a God that makes a way out of no way. We are grateful that you are a God that will heal, restore, and sustain. We are a God that keeps us even when we're, we, are, we don't have a place to work or we're not sure where our income doesn't match our expenses that somehow, God, you take care of us. Somehow, God, you encourage us and you keep us. We are grateful, God, that we have the breath of life. In this challenging and stressful time, that we know not to take life for granted. And we thank you, Lord, that you have been keeping us in this day and in this hour. And Lord, you don't ask much from us. And we ask, Lord, for every dime that we give, dime or dollar that we give, we ask that it will be multiplied with your holy touch. For every dime and dollar we give, Lord, we ask that it be used for your glory and for your kingdom. And Lord, we are grateful for every dollar that is given to this church, First Baptist, that it is used for souls being saved, for lives to be transformed, not just intellectually, but practically, that we feed those who are hungry, both spiritually and physically, that we nurture those who have the seeds of faith planted in them. And we thank you, Lord, that we see the blossom, we see the sprouts that are taking place and we understand that our roots are going deeper so that we can be stronger in our steady stride in the ways and the will of God. And now, Lord, we ask that you will encourage us and inspire us to be full participants in your kingdom by being participants in the larger community. Lord, we ask that our votes be counted, that our lives be counted in the census, and we are praying for men and women of integrity to lead this nation, this state, our county, and our cities. We are praying for men and women of faith that truly read your word, that truly pray and seek your face and operate with a God wisdom to be our leaders. Lord, we ask that you help us in the voting booth. You help us as we fill out our absentee ballots. And we are praying for every scheme of the devil to be defeated in the name of Jesus so that your will may be done and that we as a people of faith will do our due diligence in participating, not just in our church, but in our communities. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to honor you in our service, to honor you in our gifts, and honor you in the sharing of our talents. And now, Lord, we ask that you would continue to be with us as we worship you today. In the mighty, matchless name of Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.
I'm only human I'm just a man Lord help me believe in what I could be and all that I am show me the stairway I have to climb Lord for my sake teach me to take one day at a time do you when you walked among men Lord Jesus you know if you're looking below that it's worse now than then all this pushing and shoving Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. God is our Father. He loves us all. He can provide all that we need if we but call. You see, he gave his son one day for your sins and mine. And now for his sake, Lord, teach me to take one day. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. One day at a time One day at a time Sweet Jesus That's all I'm asking from you Just give me the strength To do every day What I have to do Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a
morning, church. Good morning. Today, I will be reading Mark 12, verses 13 through 17. Amen. Later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? Because Jesus knew the hypocrisy, why are you trying to trap me, he asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought the coin and he asked them, what image is this and, what, and whose inscription? Mm -hmm. Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. I will continue at verse 18 through 27. Then the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and have children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married and died without leaving any children. The second one married the widow, but he also died leaving no child. It was the same with the third. In fact, none of the seven left any children. Last of all, the woman died too. At the resurrection, whose wife will she be, since the seven were married to her? Jesus replied, Are you not in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Now about the dead rising, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the account of the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. The word of God for the people of God. I'm singing glory to to your name, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us from generation to generation. Thank you, Lord, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for being a comforter in a time of uh, desolation or isolation or grief. Thank you, Lord, that you are God. 
that you alone are worthy, that you are creator and sustainer, that you're giver and keeper, that you're, you're all that we need, Lord, and we bless you for allowing us to be in relationship with you. We take the time to smile because you gave us a day to do it. We take the time to laugh because you gave us friends to enjoy this life with. Now, Lord, have your way in this service. Glory to your name. Yes. Your name is precious. We bless you. We exalt you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Y'all, it's every now and then as you're listening to particular songs, as you're watching God's work in the body of Christ, you're reminded that if he didn't, if the Lord didn't do anything else, that sometimes we don't know what tomorrow would bring, but for me to sit and smile and watch as God's miracles walk in here praising and singing in full voice, as a pastor, you sit back and say, bless you, Lord, I feel good this morning. Y'all yes. ain't gonna tell me I can't smile when Sister John done made it back through there. Come on, y'all ain't gonna tell me that we ain't got a reason to enjoy our worship. Oh, yes. Brother Dix, now, I, 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 and, and they keep, uh, you know, they, they, they know I like a little old school. You know, I like a, I like, I like a new school with, with a little old school flavor. I'm, I'm in between, y'all, and I feel like that's what we have to be as the body of Christ. So that glory to his name took me down to Poplar Street in Augusta, Georgia. I felt like I was in Beulah Grove yes. for a minute, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but this morning, this morning, this morning, it is a beautiful, beautiful opportunity. In, in, in fact, for those who've been with us the last few weeks, you will notice that it's been pressing on my heart. I've been leaving some breadcrumbs because I knew this, this lesson was coming and, and, and I, didn't, I wasn't fully at peace until the Lord reminded me, we don't have to say it all in one Sunday. Yeah. Oh, I've been trying to sneak in, uh, uh, Brother Roosevelt, the, the, the little mini lessons so we'd be ready for today and I could, I, could, I could squeeze it in if we were already there. But the Lord reminded me, oh, we're we coming back next week. We, <laughs> we don't have to say it. <laughs> we don't have to say it all. So, so, so watch this, watch this. We are actually in, 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 in a, a spin from a, a, a mini series that we're in. Now, I, 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 I wouldn't... Uh, if I had Deacon Brian Johnson here, don't, don't nobody tell him. Um, if, if I had to coin it, it would be the Who That series. But we true Falcons fans, we don't want anybody getting the wrong idea. This is simply based. Uh -huh, did you come here? That's all right. This is simply based in Scripture. Now this is this has nothing to do with the New Orleans Saints. We are the Saints of the Most High God, but it ain't no who that nation in here. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just being clear. I don't want anybody confused. But but, but we but, but the first thing two weeks ago we asked was who's the master? Mm. Who's the master? And and in all seriousness, we wrestled and looked truthfully at the fact that there is a battle going on for our our control to manipulate not only the body of Christ, but all of us in this contemporary society that even as we engage our technology, you have to give your kids structure and barriers because they're folks that want to take them away. Mercy. Folks that want to bypass mama and daddy and the doorbell and the telephone and interact with our children through their devices without ever having to stop by and announce to the parents who they are. Mercy. There are folks that want to convince you your money should be mine, your future income should be mine, the interest on it should be mine. There are folks that want to control or master you, and we're not saying we're anti-technology. We just said, no, thank you. I already have a master. <laughs> then last week, we, we pushed on past and asked the question, who's the rock? Mm. Who's the rock? And I, I saw a couple of young folk you know, furrowing their brow and, you know, thinking I was talking about Brother Dwayne. No, no, this was about Brother Rocky, Brother Peter, Brother Cephas, that, that though God turned and said, hey, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Peter, in one set of verses, went from being called the rock upon whom I'll build my church 
to Satan get behind me. And the only difference was whether he was speaking earthly truth or godly truth. Mm. That we as the speakers of God's divine revelation and God's divine word become a part of the rock and foundation because here's the truth. Paul will help you. There's only one rock. The same answer to who's the master answered the question, who's the rock? But I'll give you a little relief. I'll give you a, a, a pre, 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 pre a requisite that here, here, you can best believe Jesus is not going to be the answer to who's the hater. Today, we will ask the question, who's the hater? Who's the hater? Now, our wonderful contemporary scholars in the comedic arena have actually coined the phrase of haters in a very different way than most societies prior to the 21st century. Hater has become an, uh, a very frequently used noun, uh-huh, Brother, Brother Welcher. It, it, it is used to describe those who don't want you to look good in what you do. In fact, there are certain uh, comedic legends, and I won't say their names. I can't recommend them because y'all would think the pastor is, is sending folk to listen to filth, foreign filth. But, but there are a couple of folks who tell you to embrace your haters, that you should celebrate your haters, that if you don't have but 10 haters, you ought to be working to get 20. Mm -hmm. In fact, other uh, comedic geniuses have, have gone to the point of, 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 of really amplifying how much we love to hate now by replacing things like the parties or players balls with haters ball. Where haters come from far and wide, they gather together with the sole purpose of hating. <laughs> on you. They want all the bad things in the world to happen to you and nobody else <laughs> but you. That, da, 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 da. Here, 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 here's, here's the question. I believe that inside of the sacred scripture, inside of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus did a good job of leaving us a blueprint of how we recognize and deal with haters. I believe that it's important that we realize the haters are absolutely expected. That the haters are a part of how we learn the word of God. That the teachings of Jesus, the gospel messages themselves, if we took out all the haters, we would lose 25 to 50 percent of our knowledge. These experiences, these so-called battles, these fights with those who are resistant produce much of the doctrine upon which we stand. Mercy. So today, my, my challenge as we ask, who's the hater in this first uh, 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 situation here, I just want to see if we can wrestle with that haters are elevators. Haters... <laughs> or elevators. Somebody hears it already because you know Old Testament scripture and you know the word says that he'll make your enemies a footstool and, and somebody back in the day used to be stomping on the ground and pretending to crush your enemy under your foot and, and, and talking about, yeah, he make my footstool, I'm going to crush your head and Jesus, oh, no, 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 watch this, watch this. A footstool is not made to be crushed. A footstool is made to elevate you. A footstool that's crushed ain't worth its cost no more. We're not saying God will make your enemies a footstool so you can go out and conquer. I'd rather you convert. I'm saying that by the time this God who works all things in accordance to your perfect and holy will finishes working this thing, the very person that wanted to be an enemy to destroy you will be the instrument that elevates you in the eyes of God and man. Mercy. Let's enter the text and and see what's happening with these old biblical 
haters in the ticket. And, and, and Mark, 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 the 12th chapter, and I appreciate you. Sister Thompson did such a wonderful job of introducing this particular pericope. Watch it, watch it. What happens here is Jesus is, has an encounter. Jesus is, is walking and has an encounter with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees and the Herodians, the first ones, we can consider them uh, serial haters. Mm. This is not a rare occasion. And, and, and in fact, throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we, we, we watch, watch, remember those sucker MCs we talked about? Like we watch them form into about four, five, six different groups. There's, there's Pharisees and Herodians and Sadducees and teachers of the law and scribes and they're, 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 they're these phrases, these chief priests. They're, they're these collective groups that have administrative and institutional power. These collective groups that form the tropes, that form the resistance, that form the, I don't want this change from this young fella. He's fighting against individuals who wouldn't be as strong if they weren't a part of the group they're a part of. So yes, there's a particular Pharisee in question, but what Jesus is actually wrestling with is not just the one Pharisee, it's the fact that the power of the Pharisees is behind the Pharisee. It's the reason it's so vital that we participate outside of our doors in our community. We need to be able to call a mayor that's got our best interest in mind. Because if the mayor is a part of one who has a psychosis of anti-you, you're going to deal with more problems than just the mayor's personal opinion. Mercy. The institutions supporting them. Y'all better know how to praise God when we stand in, in First Baptist Church, East Point, with these beautiful stones that were imported from Stone Mountain in this sanctuary with these beautiful all manner of hue bodies with two doors over the mayor is a beautiful brown sister in the office running. Y'all better know how to celebrate the diversity and the blessing of God continuing to show he's God of all, not of one. So watch it. As the haters come, they, they think they can trap Jesus into answering a question that has fake positivity embedded when its intention is to hate. Now watch it, watch it, watch it. Somebody, somebody's gonna catch it. It's gonna remind you of somebody in a second. But here the Pharisees come up and they start, uh-huh, Sister Myers, with a little bit of, I'm gonna butter your bread. I'm just gonna kiss up to you a little bit. They say, hey, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We know, we know you, you're not a respecter of person. Huh? Huh? You, 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 treat, you treat everybody the same. God made us all equal and we don't elevate, there's no big eyes and little U's in the eyes of the Lord. I know, I know what you're really about, right? Right, right. I, I, I pre, I preface, I put out these pseudo compliments all on the ground before I ask the setup question. Yeah. And then afterwards, afterwards, once I've buttered it up and I've got it looking good, and of course you're not one who, who loves one over the other, well, well, should we be giving these taxes to Caesar then? Since <laughs> he's just a man like us, ain't we? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to show you how Jesus recognizes surreptitious setups. He senses the secret setup without even explaining explicitly what all is going on in the crowd. Now what the Pharisees are really doing and the Herodians is attempting to set Jesus up to lose half of the crowd. 
There are two things going on around the year six, uh, uh, and I mean it just six is first century, y'all. So around the year six, Judea has become a Roman province. And because it's now a Roman province, the census has gone out and the Romans are now taxing each individual citizen within Judea, Samaria. They're now paying money to the Romans who are really seen as the oppressors. Well, you know as well as I do that there's a young brother, this is another Judas, no relation. There's a young Judas who has now started up a movement to say we have no need we are Hebrew we have our own leaders we don't need your oppressive practices so we don't have to pay taxes to no Caesar around here I don't care Caesar Augustus Caesar Tiberius whoever you are brother emperor we got our own Lord and we are our own people and you all know how it is once the most radical starts to speak you in trouble if you're not as radical as the most radical now somebody got kicked out of the Black Lives Matter movement because you didn't know all the rules before you walked in. You still think Black Lives Matter, but somebody said something, you said, wait a minute now, what'd you say over there? And they said, wait, if you don't believe all the weight, come on. Mm. These wedge issues are very often used to push you and divide you and make you make a choice. Mm. I ask you a question in 2020 that really just intends to make half the people listening not like you no more. Oh, I better, I better make it plain. Somebody in here believes that God gave us life and that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Watch, watch how, watch how the contemporary world will do. They'll come in and say, if you're a real Christian, you love life, don't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you know the scriptures, right? Right. So they say, well, if you love life and you're a real Christian, then you got to be pro-life and anti-choice or you're not a real Christian. I want you to answer the question out loud so half the people will... Mercy. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The same life, the same law, when we split to the other side of the table, they'll say, hey, 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 you're a real Christian. You shouldn't support the death penalty. If you believe we came to have life and have it more abundantly, you believe that now the state shouldn't sponsor this murder. I want you to answer the question out loud so half the people are not like... And what's crazy about 2020 is this, uh, oh, I, I, I think it's so unique for America and the way we do things. The same pro-life group that ran out of the Christian box on the abortion question completely switches 180 and it's a different pro-life group that ran out of the Christian, oh come on now, come on sir, when it comes to the death penalty. Mm. There are setups among us to make us stop listening to each other. Mm. There are ways of attempting to convince you you're different from me, even if we're 97% on one accord. Mercy. There are ways of sneaking in the room and asking a question to the professor that we think will undermine them in front of the classroom. Mercy. There are ways of coming to the board meeting and you're pretending that you really just want to deal with the finances, but you're actually dropping pieces and places because you've been stealing thousands of dollars and you mad by that woman over there pouring out that oil from the alabaster box and you could have had a piece of that money if old crazy lady, how's she going to pour out that perfume on Jesus' feet? I'm the thief around here. You better bring me that money. Watch it, watch it, Judah. And there are ways that we began to push back and hate on those who don't deserve our hating. Mm. So Jesus, in the wisdom of the moment, seeing that what you're really trying to do is get me, if I say yes, pay taxes to Caesar, all of those supporting the other Judas, all of those radicals who believe that Romans are oppressing us, everybody who believes that we got to fight the powers that be will say, oh, Jesus is a sellout. Right. 
But if I say, no, we don't pay taxes to Caesar, you and these Herodians who are supporters of Herod, y'all will run and try to, oh, come on, they'll run tail that in a minute. Their radical behinds will be the first ones going, Caesar. Because the real issue is you have a problem with the crowd listening to me. The real issue is you want my name besmirched. The real issue is you have a problem even though I've healed the sick, even though I've been raised from the dead, even though I've given the blind sight, even though I've prayed over and given mothers their children back, even though I've done all of that, it ticked you off every time rather than making you celebrate. I want you to see it clearly now. Jesus would sit, see a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath, heal the man. And the scripture is clear. Pharisees, Herodians start running out trying to plot how we going to kill it. I can't deal with that kind of power outside of my control. I could deal with you having influence if you were willing to subject it to what I tell you to do. Mercy. But you're going to have the influence, the voice, the ear of your loved ones, of your business, of your company, of your children, of your church, of these people. You get, you, they are listening to you, honoring and respecting you, and you won't do what I tell you to do. Mm. So I'm intentionally trying to hate on you Jesus in front of the crowd because I know whether yes or no I have been half successful yes. at taking away your crowd yes. Jesus again sensing and seeing this secretive surreptitious setup that they're trying to do says why are you trying to trap me watch it now he didn't talk about their mamas. I have to say that up front, oh, Reverend Epps, because I still hear twice a week somebody threaten me with their old self. When we notice a hater in the room, we feel like we can do whatever we used to do in 1977. Mercy. Once we've declared that that person is on the hater list, we feel, oh, they don't know the old me. Don't make the old Lucy come out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I need to say up front, I, Jesus did not tell them, your mama's so fat. <laughs> the way that Jesus responds, why are you trying to trick me? Bring me the denarius. It could have been bring me the shekel or bring me the, the quarter. Bring, bring me this unit of currency that you're discussing. All right. yeah. Bring it to me. Now watch this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whose picture is this? Whose face is it? Whose inscription? Whose name is this on this little coin that you're talking about? That's Caesar's. <laughs> watch it. Watch him. Watch this. Picture. Give to Caesar what Caesar's and give to God what's God. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, that's a drop the mic first century moment. Yeah. <laughs> Many of you don't recognize, I apologize. For, uh, in colloquial terms, to drop the mic means what I said was so fire, I need to pause and walk away. All right, I'm not technically going to drop any microphones. They may break and we don't have that kind of budget. So I need to go back so you know what's happening there. I, the, right after Jesus, please pretend I, I, I physically dropped the mic to show Jesus walking off from <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't, we didn't put drop mics in the budget. Watch it. So, so here, here, here. I want three things to be pulled away. The first one is this: haters aren't always lying. Haters aren't always lying. So here's the the the, the real deal it is positioning that the haters are using to attempt to catch Jesus to be honest every one of us carries around a history with us that would embarrass us in certain public settings 
If you don't, you simply haven't lived long enough. Mercy. All of us have moments that if they were placed into the public eye, on to the screen, if we were called out about that issue and, and, oh, while we're on the microphone, would be an embarrassment to us, our families, and the king. Mercy. There's no reason in pretending you don't have moments where you made bad choices. Mm. That you don't have moments that you wish you shoulda, woulda, coulda done it a different way. That you don't have moments where you said something to your spouse you never shoulda said. Where y'all got to wrestling and fighting and scratching and nobody shoulda known. You, you, where you spanked a little harder than you wish you did. Where you said the truth and you thought it was, but wait a minute, then you knew it was a lie, but you ain't go back and correct. Where you went hollering at somebody didn't belong in your house. Where you went laying by somebody shouldn't have been in your bed. Where you got unforgiveness in your heart you've been carrying since 1961 where you didn't do come on now we all have a list and the truth is the haters don't have to make up lies in order to create embarrassment Mercy. one of the truths is it is also ignorant to bring things up because I want to distract the crowd from the truth of the messenger. Yeah. Watch it, watch it, watch I'm not saying that he didn't go to jail in 1921. What that got to do with him being innocent, having a neck, foot on there, a knee in the middle of his neck being murdered in the street. I'm saying that if you want to bring up what he did before he went through rehab and came out and got his life right and got on the praise team and did it. Now you want to go back and bring that up. It's just because you hating and you're trying to distract yes. from the truth now. of the situation. I'm sure he did do that. I'm sure they were in there. What that got to do so I don't want any Christian to get caught up in trying to chase haters. Accept them as a norm. They've been established since the biblical days. And if they hate it on Dr. King and they hate it on Martin and Malcolm and they hate it on Muhammad Ali and they hate it on Jesus of Nazareth, they probably go hate in your neighborhood yes, too. Sir. If they hated one who was perfect so much that they strung him up and murdered him, how much more? Mm -hmm. The second, second thing I want, want you to do is to mine, mine the gold nuggets that your haters leave before you. Mine out the gold nuggets that your haters leave for you. Now here's Here's the truth, y'all. I mean, just, we are human beings. There's no need in pretending it don't tick you off when somebody starts talking about you behind your back. Mm. There's no reason to pretend that you are fine with somebody telling a flat out lie that you were somewhere that you were not. Mm. That you drank something you didn't drink, that you broke something you didn't break, that you didn't pay something that you paid. Anytime somebody is, is besmirching, ha <laughs> ha, that's my word of the day. I usually don't use it. It's feeling all right to besmirching your name. Mercy. <laughs> it bothers us even though we can't control whether other people are liars or not. Mercy. Think about it. If you can't make your spouse, quote unquote, appreciate you and build the statue that you deserve, then how you going to make folk that don't even live with you <laughs> say what you want them to say about you? They have the right to lie and say you're not good at the job. Mm. Uh, let me see this. Uh, they can lie and say you're not good at the job. Mm. I don't like that saying they have the right to. That might make you assume that they haven't violated Christian principles. No, 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 no. Here's the deal. They don't have to operate with integrity to continue to live on the earth. Amen. I'm speaking about this as a state of existence so that we set realistic expectations as to what we control and what we don't. Yes. 
And then we remove from our haters the ability to dictate our relationship with the Lord, our smile or our frown, our walk and our talk. Because if I know that you exist, I expect that you exist, and I recognize I don't have to shut you up to live my life. It, it frees me from the constructs of you and your hating controlling how I feel today. Jesus walks around every day with Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, high priests wanting him dead. And still is going to have a good time and raise him. Jesus walks around every day with clear and present danger and still knows how to laugh and kick back with the disciples. He walks around every day with a list of stress that would make us have to go see seven psychiatrists. <laughs> and he chilling. Hey, man, one time they say Jesus wept. Everybody's favorite Bible verse. But most folks don't even remember what happened. His cousin died. You know, come on now. You give him a little bit of tear for that. Come on now. <laughs> I know I'm going to bring him back to life in a minute, but it still throws me off when old last lad, come on now, okay? Yes. So here, I am not going to attempt to complete this lesson. In all honesty, you all, it truly resonated with me. This is huge for the body of Christ. We have to learn to succeed amidst, amidst haters because the truth is, the better we do, the more haters will come. The truth is, the greatest goal of the hater is to separate you from your destiny. So if you really don't want haters, just don't do nothing. It's not an option for us. So I realize that we've got to prepare our psychological mindset to take the wondrous blessing that haters can be without ever letting it take us off course. Yeah. The second nugget, take the gold nugget. The second piece, take the gold nugget from the haters. Here's the truth. This isn't the first time the haters have come to Jesus. Jesus has a strategy of accepting your minor truth and raising you a major truth. Mercy. When they often came to Jesus, it was for criticisms about he and the disciples. They would come and say, hey, what are your disciples doing eating grain in the field? It's a Sabbath day. Hey, I caught you. I caught your disciple. He was eating and he didn't wash his hands. Jesus never proclaimed he shouldn't wash his hands. He would simply take your truth, you're right. But listen, what's more important is your heart than your hand. Mm. Don't fight with a hater just because you don't like them. Accept their truth and elevate them. Mm. Here's the deal. Even if someone lied on you, take it to your prayer closet with God and see how you can get better from it. Even if they have misrepresented who you are, take it to the prayer closet with God. Dissect that thing, get better. Take something that makes you better and throw the rest out. Leave it in there at the foot of the altar with the Lord and go on about your business. Mm. If you eliminate all the growth moments of Jesus interacting with haters, he's a much less mature minister himself. And the final, the final one for today, the final one for today is that, okay, we want to have the eyes of eagles, not the ears of the rabbit. The eyes of the eagle, not the ears of the rabbit. An eagle can see its prey that is necessary for survival from miles away in the midst of a forest, in the midst of snow, from miles away, it can see a small rodent creeping along the ground. 
It's able to focus in from miles away. Y'all should see some of the hawks. That they, they dive at, at miraculous speeds where nothing else going on is important except me, my survival, and my baby is back home. I'm going to swoop in with the intensity of an eagle and grab this week's food. There are a million other things between me and my sustaining force. None of it will separate me from what I need to live. Mm. Now, on the other hand, I am told, now I haven't hung out with a lot of rabbits, but I'm told that no matter what is going on, if you say, so over they, I, I've heard that rabbit is have you turn it yes. and twist it. They ain't got claws like the eagle. I'm not hating on a rabbit now. Yeah, they, 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 they didn't get wings and they don't have claws. They don't have talons. So whatever's over there I can take them out. Mm. The eagle gets to just swoop on by because them claws over there can't do nothing to me no way. The rabbit can't, I can't take that kind of risk. Whatever I heard you seen a deer just sit. Deer will stare at you for 17 minutes. What you gonna do? I ain't gonna do nothing until you do something. You go somewhere, you go somewhere first. <laughs> and the truth is, in leadership, in Christianity, in parenting, you can't stop your mission every time haters tickle your ear. Mercy. You have to remember your gifts and your mission at every point along the way. You have to focus in on your God-given assignment, which is what will bring you life, and target it and get it done because I can tell you what won't stop that eagle or that hawk from getting that food is somebody over there on the side talking about, I don't even like the way they, they fly. I don't. You can hate all you want. They're going to eat today. Yes. Amen. This is what I need for life, me and my children will have it. If this is God's assignment for you, yes. we have to treat it with the same urgency. Yeah. I don't have the option of not doing what God called me to do in order to get you to stop hating on me. Jesus did not have the option of being quiet and telling them, you're right, you're right, I, I, I just shouldn't say anything else in order to make folk more comfortable. It wasn't an option. He had to do what God called him to do. Now, 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 I, I did a, a pedagogical move. I want you to see now, those who are scholars, you've already heard the introduction to next week's lesson. In the 12th chapter, it's one of the rare times where back to back, we get to see Jesus interact with the Pharisees, then Jesus interact with the Sadducees, and we watch how Jesus elevates from all of the hate. At the end and the conclusion of the matter, one of the things we'll cover next week is that the institutions and haters may temporarily think they beat you. I can only imagine that those who'd been targeting Jesus for three, four years, when they saw him stripped, when they saw him being beaten, when they saw thorns being pressed into his head, when they saw his side being pierced, when they saw soldiers slapping him saying prophesy who hit you, when they saw him hanging wide, when they saw it, they thought they had won. Their pre-existent experience, their prejudices told them that's what victory looks like. They had no idea that in 2,000 years we'd be quoting, asking where, oh, 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 death, where is your sting? That the grave couldn't hold him and 
from the Pharisees to the Sadducees to the Judases, all the haters were used for the glory of God. I want you all to know that there is one who has sacrificed for us, who gave his life for us, not only modeling what it is we do when haters are around us, modeling how we stay on mission and on focus, but going before us and sacrificing his own life that we might live. Let us pray, Lord, we bless and honor you this day. We thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the power, the fortitude, the wisdom to be able to see when others have negative intentions for our lives and our image. And now, Lord, we give our reputations to you. We give our hearts, our minds, our homes, our finances, our honesty, our integrity. We give it all to you. And we ask that you have your way with our name. You have your way in our homes. You have your way in our history. You have your way in our emotions. And don't allow anything to take us off the path that you've placed us on. Thank you, Lord, that you give us tools for elevation. Thank you, Lord, that our interactions, whether they feel good or not, are all used, that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to your will. Now, Lord, if there's anyone under the sound of our voices, anyone under the sphere of our influence who does not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, we pray their salvation. We pray their connection. We pray that you will have your way in their lives and in ours. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. We're looking for you. Join us on the website. Look out for activities. We're Starting one at a time, y'all, we do some hybrid items, but no matter what we do, we offer a virtual item. So if you want Wednesday Bible study, Sunday morning Bible study, if you want to come together in any way just for fun and fellowship, we'd love to have you, and we'd love for you to join us. Amen. We want to make sure you understand our doctrine. But even if you've been visiting online, we want to welcome and open the doors of our church. We love you. We bless you. To him who is able to keep us from falling, the only wise God, be power, glory, majesty, and dominion now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Jesus, oh, how sweet the name.
thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Please remember to visit our website for updated church information, and please join us next Sunday for our online service. Take care and have a blessed week.